I'm gonna show you how to tackle those boss portals in Bravely Default 2, and we're gonna start right now. If you wanna learn how to break Bravely Default 2, hit that like and subscribe button. Don't miss out. In Bravely Default 2, you'll find these portals, which hold bosses, which will help you unlock Legendary Class, or up to level 15 in your job classes. If you thought you were breaking the game already, you ain't seen nothing yet. These portals unlock at the beginning of Chapter 6 and can be found all over the game map. There are seven of them in total. There's this one in Halcyonia. Here's the second portal in Savalon. The third portal in Wiswald. In East Rheimdahl, there's this portal. In West Rheimdahl, there's this portal. In Holograd, there's this portal. Then this portal behind Halcyonia. Let's go over some of the character builds that are going to break these bosses. Today, we're going to use two physical attackers, being Beast Class Main and Thief Subclass. You may be wondering, Boogie Boogie, why are you using Beastmaster? I mean, look at their outfit. It ugly. Ugh. There's a major reason why, and I have a link to that explanation in the description. The abilities we're using are Hellblade's Surpassing Power. The upper limit of the amount of damage that can be inflicted is increased so that it can exceed 9,999. This is critical for breaking these bosses and breaking that damage ceiling. Next, I use Phantom's Critical Amp. Critical hit damage is increased by 30%. This is here to ensure that we inflict massive damage. I also like to use Phantom's Dual Wield. Equipping multiple weapons will not reduce their effectiveness. This means you have full damage on each weapon you equip, greatly increasing your attack power. I also like to use Shieldmaster's Fast Hands. Any speed reductions caused by equipment in either hand become speed bonuses instead. This is very important to the strategy, so I'd recommend using this. For the fifth slot, I like to use Raw Power. Every use of the Rave Command increases physical attack by 10% until the end of the turn. So we're just stacking damage on damage, like a damage sandwich. For a third character, I like to use a Beastmaster Main and White Mage Sub for a dedicated healer. The abilities I'm using are MP Regen. MP is restored by 5% at the end of each turn. It keeps you stockpiled on MP, pretty useful. Next, I like to use Oracle's Noble Sacrifice. When the user knocked unconscious, any unconscious allies will be revived with full MP once per battle. It's kind of like your get out of jail free card. Then I like to use Dragoon's Full Force. Applying spells or other abilities to multiple targets will increase their effects, including the amount of damage inflicted. I feel like this affects cure spells, but if you know, comment down below. Of course, we've got to use Beastmaster's MP Saver. Reduces MP consumption by 20%. This just means you get to use more spells for the magic you have. It's a 20% off sale for casting spells. Nice. And then I like to use Pictomancer's Convert MP. Taking damage will cause the user's MP to be restored by a portional amount. Meaning, if this character takes damage, you get MP in return. That's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to cast more spells. For the fourth character, I like to use a Beastmaster main and a Bard subclass. This character will be equipped with Bard's Born Entertainer. The effects of singing and artistry abilities are increased by the percentage based on the user's level divided by 15. It's a lot of math. Anywho, the buffs or debuffs are increased. I also like to use Arcanist MP Regen. MP is restored by 5% at the end of each turn. Next we have Pictomancer's Convert MP. Taking damage will cause the user's MP to be restored by a portional amount. And of course you gotta have Beastmaster's MP Saver. Reduces MP consumption by 20%. You can choose whatever ability you want for the fifth slot, but today I'm going to use Berserker's Unshakable Will. Prevents all status ailments that impede the user's ability to freely choose their actions. Sleep, Paralysis, Dread, Berserk, Confusion, Charm, and Freezing. Even though all other characters may be impeded, this character will still be able to move. It's kind of a safety measure. If this has you thinking, Boogie Boogie, I don't have any of these job classes that high of a level. Don't worry, got you covered. I have two videos on how to efficiently farm JP in minutes or seconds. Links in the description. For your items, I'd recommend to have a lot of tents in stock, a lot of Phoenix Downs, and a lot of ethers. The ethers are really gonna come in handy. Let's go ahead and take down these bosses. This portal in Hacionia contains four bosses. These characters are Bernard the Thief, Annie Hall the Beastmaster, Orpheus the Bard, then the Gambler class lady. Typically for these boss fights, I like to start off with defaulting. I have as much BP as I can get at the moment. When you have enough BP for an assault, go to your Beastmaster Bard class. Singing, go to Hurt So Bad, Max Brave, and get to performing. Now, one of my attackers are ready to battle. You want to down the easiest bosses for this fight. That's going to be the Gambler class and the Bard class. Go to Thievery, Godspeed Strike, Max Brave, and target the Gambler class twice and the Bard class twice. For my second attacker, I want to get rid of the Thief. That's the biggest threat to my party at the moment. Thievery, Gossipy Strike, Mass Brave. 
Now with Godspeed Strike, you get two attacks. Your second attack will do an equivalent amount of damage. So if you attack them once, let's say it's 10,000, a couple of turns later, another 10,000 will hit them. So you get two hits. So both Anihal and Bernard have two Godspeed Strikes right in the wings that are gonna hit them. They have less than half health, so they're gonna go down. So all you have to do is default to the end. There you go. I got Bernard's knife, give him Palui. This knife has thief passive abilities. In fact, you can get all these classes weapons from this portal. The thief weapon, the beastmaster weapon, the gambler weapon, and the bard weapon. And every one of these weapons, when equipped, gives said classes passive ability. For example, the Givan Palui has all of the thief classes passive abilities when equipped. So every attack with this dagger, you're going to mug and have a better chance of stealing rare items. Imagine if you had two per character. Let's go to the next portals. Here's another portal in Savalon. In this portal, we're going to fight the Alchemist class, the Shieldmaster class, and the Swordmaster class. I like to default until I'm ready for an assault. Use your Bard. Max her so bad on your party with the Bard. Max Brave Godspeed Strike on Glenn and Gladys. Have your other attacker split the damage between the other two. Gladys is under half health and has four Godspeed Strikes ready to attack. This person's done and they don't even know it yet. So just default. Nice. So like all other portals, you can get JP orbs and those classes of specific weapons. So in this fight, you can farm this weapon with Swordmaster passive abilities, this axe with Shieldmaster passive abilities, and this axe with Salve Maker passive abilities. Next portal. In this portal in Wizbald, you're going to fight a Spirit Master, Oracle, and Dragoon as bosses. In the beginning of the fight, you're not going to find the Dragoon. She's in the air. So default until you're ready for an assault. When you're ready, hurt so bad the entire party. I would spread your Godspeed Strikes between Helio and Dominic. Helio will resurrect. That's okay. You'll get him down. Focus most of your attacks on the Dragoon and one attack on Helio. There you go. In this fight, you can get this bow with Oracle passive abilities, this staff with Spirit Master passive abilities, and this spear with Dragoon passive abilities. But for me, this one has been super rare. I only have two after hours of farming. Maybe you'll be luckier than me when farming. Next portal. In East Rhymedell, you'll find this portal. Here, you'll fight Pictomancer, Berserker, and Arcanist as bosses. You know how it is. Default before you assault. Max Brave hurts so bad for the entire party. As you can see, I ran into some problems. You're gonna want to eliminate the Pictomancer and Arcanist immediately. Max Godspeed Strike. Heal is needed. Now with the Berserker left, this fight's super easy. Max Brave, Godspeed Strike. That easy. In this fight, you can farm this axe with passive Berserker abilities, this staff with passive Pictomancer abilities, and this staff with passive Arcanist abilities. Next portal. For this portal in West Rheimdahl, you'll fight Phantom, Hellblade, and Monk bosses. Default before the assault. When you're ready with your Bard, Max Brave hurts so bad. With your Beastmaster Thieves, I advise going after the Phantom and Monk. Now, Godspeed Strike Adam until he's down. It's that simple. In this fight, you can farm this dagger with passive phantom abilities, this sword with passive hellblade abilities, and the Genji Gloves accessory from the monk. Next portal. In the portal in Holograd, you'll fight a white mage, vanguard, red mage, and ranger. It's a fierce combination, but I know you can handle it. For usual, default before you assault. Your bard you hurt so bad. You want a max brave godspeed strike on the white mage and the red mage. If you have any more Godspeed Strikes to spare, attack the Ranger as well. Now this fight's a piece of cake. Godspeed Strike as needed. 
Do you guys know who won that battle? I, I can't tell. I, I just, I can't tell. Do we win? D do we win? Of course we won. In this battle, you can farm this sword with passive Vanguard abilities, this sword with passive Red Mage abilities, this bow with passive Ranger abilities, and this staff with passive White Mage abilities. Last portal. This portal behind Halcyonia is a bit of a doozy. If you have a great strategy for this boss fight, let me know down below. In this portal, you'll find a Black Mage, Brave Bearer, and Bastion bosses. This battle's a little different. The Bastion will have a move that will protect his entire party. This move negates two physical attacks, which means you have to brave at least two times in order to hit someone even once so you want to take out the bastion before he can be able to do that there is a catch to the strategy though the bastion reflects physical damage meaning if you hit the bastion with massive damage you will also get hit with massive damage but that's what white majors are for you always got to show your hero some love i personally like to go into deficit in this battle so for one of my attackers i'm just gonna brave once thievery and do two godspeed strikes on the bastion Luckily, the Bastion's almost down. You want to finish off the Bastion, then go after the Black Mage. Raise and heal as needed with your White Mage. So the Brave Bearer can single-handedly take care of your entire party, but is a lot easier to defeat without the Black Mage and the Bastion, especially the Bastion. That guy's gotta go. If you really want to hammer him home? You know the strat. Max Brave hurts so bad. Ooh, that music sounds so good. Then Godspeed Strike to your heart's content. Should I use a regular attack to finish him off? Sure. There we go. But if you have a strategy that you feel that works better for you, comment down below. I want the community to know. Woo! I got a sword of light. So with this battle, you can farm this spear with passive bastion abilities, this staff with passive black mage abilities, and this sword with passive brave bear abilities. This weapon is probably the most broken weapon in the game. Some of you are probably asking, Hoogie Boogie, your main character was doing so much damage. How'd they doing that? Well, I'll tell you. He has a max speed stat. And how did he get this max speed stat? I'll show you in a video right here. If there's anything else about Bravely Default 2 you want to know, comment down below. Stay healthy, stay strong. Catch you next time.